living God, that we serve a God who's come, who's died, who's rose. He's with us through his spirit. We're not just going through religious activities in hopes that one day when we die that there is a God out there. We are walking with the living God who walks with us in every circumstance that we're in. When you wake up tomorrow morning, he'll be there. He walks with you. Know that his presence walks with you, right? Know that God is for you. And when you own that, it'll change everything. Wherever you go, there God is. You and God walking by yourself, there he is. He walks with you. You go into a business meeting and you're the only Christian there, you outnumber the non-Christians because Jesus is with you. You're in your home and you're the only Christian in your home, you outnumber the non-believers in your home because God is with you, right? You go to a church and you're the only believer in the church, find another church, okay? So, God says, never fear, he's here, he's your strong protector. But then notice what else he says. The promise that God is with us, it provides us gladness. He provides gladness that endures during times of opposition. Gladness. Did you hear that word? Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Notice what the psalmist says. He says, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. There's really no stream that ran through the city of God, which is Jerusalem. He's using a metaphor here to talk about that God's presence is that like a reflection refreshing, life-giving river. I mean, that's what God's presence is like. I mean, have you ever had that experience where um, it's been a while since you've had an opportunity to take a shower? Like maybe you've been on a camping trip or maybe you've been, maybe you just finished working out or something like that. Don't nudge the person next to you. It's not like a a chance to tell them he's talking about you. Um, But you ever had that experience where you just, finally you get in the shower it's just so refreshing as the water hits your body and you just feel cleansed and refreshed and you know layers of sweat come off it's like oh that's what God's presence is like for us because when we walk alone we can get stale we can get dry we can feel like everything's up against us but it's refreshing to know that the Lord's presence is with us even during times of opposition The city of Jerusalem was always under siege, it seems. People were always coming against God's people, and God was always protecting them up until the point, what? Where he decided to remove some of his presence on purpose to discipline them. But then God still has shown a love for Israel and bringing them back into the land and prophetically promising to do what he was going to do. The truth is God walks with all of us. He's with us even in times of opposition, even when people and circumstances seem to be coming against us. And what do we experience during those times? We can experience gladness. See, for some of us as Christians, we think when we're being blessed, it's the time to smile and praise God and tell everybody how awesome Jesus is. And when we're going through tough times, for some reason, somebody somewhere taught us that it's spiritual to whine and moan and complain. Oh, I'm such a Christian. I'm just going through a tough time right now. If you knew how bad it was for me, I'm just suffering for the Lord. And we think that's spiritual. It's not spiritual. It's okay to suffer. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to have a consistently have a woe is me victim mentality is nowhere found in the scriptures. I mean, you think about the ministry of the Apostle Paul for just a second. I mean, nobody would want that calling. I wouldn't want that calling. Here's what his calling looked like. That Ananias, go tell Saul how much he must suffer for my name. Here's his calling. Now that you know me, you're going to suffer for the rest of your life. That's your calling. How about that? That's what people are like. I can't wait to meet the Apostle Paul. I don't really necessarily want to meet him. I want to meet Jesus. But when I see Paul and I read about all of his exploits and what he's done, I don't read Paul saying, woe is me. I'm in prison again. Everybody's beating me. I'm writing a letter to my congressman. This is ridiculous. I don't read that. I read this. Hey, even though I've been shipwrecked, even though I've been beaten, even though people inside the church are against me and people outside the church come against me and I've been, all these things are going on and I'm shipwrecked, here's what I know. These light and momentary afflictions are nothing to be compared to the weight of glory that's coming. I love the Lord. 
Hey, Paul, you might be beheaded today. Hey, for me to live as Christ, I'm in joy right now. To die is gain. It's even better. But I'm convinced that I'm going to remain in the body because it's good for you that I can come impart some spiritual wisdom into your life. And for that reason, I think I'm going to continue to live. And I'm so excited about Jesus. If there's anybody that would have had any reason to be, woe is me, life stinks, can't wait to die and go to heaven, it would have been Paul. And yet Paul's like, hey, I love the Lord. This is awesome. I have a chance to share. And guess what? I'm in prison, but praise the Lord. It's become known throughout the whole Praetorian Guard and everybody else that my chains are for Christ. I'm witnessing. Praise God. That's his heart. The Apostle Paul said it this way in Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. He doesn't say, hey, when I'm preaching the gospel on Mars Hill and people are coming to Christ. He's saying always, no matter what my circumstances are, I'm rejoicing in the Lord.